Hey, this is Rachel Cunningham, and you're listening to Joyful Love, episode 64. If you're ready to bring joy and connection back to your marriage, stick around. Each week, I give you the tools to up-level your thinking, open your heart, and bring joy and fun back to your relationship. Because it's not enough just to stay married. We want to love being married. Today, we're going to talk about when you are either feeling numb about your relationship, like maybe you wake up and you're just like, I just really don't care today, right? Or, or maybe you're, you're just starting to notice that you're, you're, you're really apathetic about even improving your relationship anymore. Maybe you're, maybe you're checked out, right? These are all kind of words that I've been hearing this week of I'm feeling numb. I'm feeling apathetic. I'm feeling like I'm kind of checked out. So, Sometimes my clients come to me with this problem and they're like, this is my problem on our consultation. And sometimes it kind of comes and goes as we do our work together. So if that's you, know that you are normal. (laughs) Um, You know, maybe you are apathetic about creating connection with your partner, or maybe you just simply rather, you're in a mode where you would just rather be alone than have a date night or, you know, kind of do the work to build that connection. And with these feelings of numbness and feeling checked out, you might start noticing thoughts like, actually, I'd just be fine being single, <laughs> right? And, and those kind of thoughts kind of creep in like, you know, I, I think I think life might be easier being single even. Um, and I want you to know that most long-term couples feel this kind of thing occasionally, right? During different phases of their relationship. It's very normal. So sometimes for one reason or another, our brain really just wants to have a break from something, you know, because let's be honest, we, we all have a lot of things going on. And sometimes our brain likes to choose one aspect of our life and check out. A lot of times that's our relationships, right? Because relationships do take work. So if we're overwhelmed, it is normal to have the feeling of, I want to check out right now. I don't want to work on anything right now, right? And if your relationship is in a sticking point, it especially says, let's just check out. It's a coping mechanism. That's when you start to notice those feelings of feeling distant from your partner and and feeling kind of numb to your relationship. And you start questioning your choices even in the relationship. Um, All very normal. Again, all very normal. So feeling numb or checked out, again, can be a coping mechanism. And it can also be a coping mechanism to avoid other emotions. So it's important to pay attention to and and to start being aware of it, right? And not just to kind of brush this feeling of numbness or apathy under the rug again, because it could be that you are really kind of uh, it, your your, bra- your body and your nervous system are saying, I don't want to feel frustrated anymore. I don't want to feel ignored or invalidated. I don't want to feel unsupported. So I'm just going to check out, which is even more important to say, okay, let's pay attention here and let's see what might be going on underneath the surface. One of the things that I teach is that you are in control of your own happiness in life. And I encourage you to start taking control of that. Start taking control of your emotions. And sometimes you can use this brilliant advice against your relationship. This is what we like to do. We like to take this brilliant advice. We like to take thought work and mind management tools And our brains like to figure out a way to use it against us. So we have to be on to our brains constantly, right? As you start to focus more and more on your own happiness and taking charge of what you can in life, you might naturally become more independent. And that can be a good thing, especially if you're in a very codependent relationship where you are kind of depending on each other to fulfill you it's a good thing to become more independent at times. But you start showing up differently, right? You start validating yourself. You start pursuing your own heart's desires in new ways. And life gets really exciting again, right? You start to you know, get those dopamine hits and creating those feelings of excitement within yourself. 
and you realize that you actually don't have to have your partner in order to experience that deep joy and peace. Now, this revelation is a good thing, believe it or not. The revelation that, oh, I don't need my partner to feel that deep joy and peace. When you realize that your happiness is within, and then you notice yourself either checking out of your relationship or feeling a bit a bit apathetic in it, you can take this information two ways. The first way is to start jumping down a rabbit trail and start questioning everything. And you can make it mean that, that something is going majorly wrong. Uh, you know, you start asking disempowering questions that ultimately take you into low value thinking. Thoughts like, and questions like, what's wrong with me? Do I not care? Do I love him? Am I selfish? Am I doing something wrong, right? And then because our brains really don't like to feel that shame or that guilt, for good reason, because it really sucks to feel game and shame and guilt, we shift our blame to our partners. We start looking for reasons why they are at fault for our, for our disconnection, right? We, we start, we're like, okay, I'm feeling numb. I'm feeling apathetic. What's wrong with me? Oh, wait, what's wrong with them? What's wrong with my partner? And you start, you know, saying I'm distant because he's like this, or I'm checked out because he's checked out, or I don't care anymore because he's too hard to be around. And when you engage in these kind of unhelpful and disempowering questions, you start adding on to the feelings of apathy. You start uncovering some other things, right? Once again, you start focusing on the past and worrying about the future, which leaves out the present moment. And it adds resentment and frustration back into the mix, or it uncovers those thoughts again in a disempowering way, not in a way where you're paying attention and saying, okay, what do I need to do here? But in a disempowering way where you're just going to keep going down the rabbit trail of blame and criticism. So first of all, look, I've been married for, to the love of my life for 25 years. And I am telling you right now that even the best of marriages sometimes feel a bit engaged, disengaged from each other. I personally am such an independent person who likes to figure out things on my own that anytime I have alone time for extended periods, like I did this week, the thought pops in my, my mind, wow, single life is so easy, right? So with the exception of genuinely missing my sweet moments with Chris, and our connection together, with the exception of that, which I do want until the end of my life, I really do believe that I personally could rock the single life. And guess what that means about my marriage and about my love for Chris? Absolutely nothing. That thought that I could rock the single life is just a thought that pops in my head occasionally. And it could be a true thought. Who knows if it, if it is or not. But my brain definitely thinks it's true. My brain definitely thinks there are times when single life could be easier. There are times when I think I could rock the single life. And it's just a thought. It doesn't mean anything about how much I love Chris, how much I want to be married to him, how committed I am to him. It doesn't mean a thing. Right? It's a normal thought that happens in many partners who are independent thinkers and doers. And also in many partners who do the work to really own their responsibility for their own lives, right? So what can you do about it when you start to notice that you're feeling numb or having thoughts like, I couldn't do this alone? There's three things I want you to remember and to take from this episode is that number one, First of all, I don't want you to jump to any conclusions that this means you should just end it all, right? I mean, maybe you are someone who will decide that you want something different for your life than this specific marriage. But I would hate for you to rush into that because you have an unrealistic belief that good marriages never go through periods of independence 
and times of checking out or times of feeling a bit apathetic about their relationship. So that's number one. Don't jump to any conclusions, right? Don't jump to conclusions that this means anything specific about your relationship. And then the second thing is, I don't want you to rush to muster up a new feeling. Don't feel like you have to fake a lovey-dovey emotion real quick. If you rush to a new emotion really quick and try to fake it, that'll feel like hustle and it'll feel like a graspiness in your love life. And honestly, it's, it's just not helpful. So don't rush to fix it. This is a time to just pause and notice, oh, I'm feeling this feeling. Feel it in your body. Pay attention to what it feels like in your body. So, okay, I notice I'm feeling numb. I notice I'm feeling apathetic about our relationship. Let those feelings be in your body. Don't be afraid of them. Don't make them mean anything. Just hold them with compassion. You can say, yeah, this is my brain right now. This is what we're working with today. I'm feeling apathetic about my relationship. I'm feeling numb. I'm noticing that. I'm not piling on a bunch of judgmental thoughts about it. I'm just noticing what I'm feeling today. I don't have to rush through it. I don't have to ignore it. I don't have to change it and I don't have to fix it. I can just let it be there without judgment. Life is 50-50. I've said this before. Life is 50-50. And sometimes you'll notice a feeling that gives you pause. That apathy and that numbness is are, are when you notice those, it usually gives you pause about your relationship. And it's okay to actually pause and feel it. Very likely it will pass, right? Many times these kind of feelings, they just, they come because you have been some thoughts during the day and then they pass. That's the honest to God truth. Feelings pass. They are just as fleeting as our thoughts. Or you might notice that it doesn't pass. It might come back and it might linger for a while. And all, of, all this means is that your soul is wanting you to dig a little bit deeper and to understand what this feeling is trying to get across to you. But to know what your soul is saying, to know what your higher self is trying to say to you through this feeling, you first have to accept the feeling and allow it to be in your body and actually do the work to feel it without pushing it away and without resisting it. Relationships come with many different thoughts and feelings. And it's, it's a normal part of meshing two people's lives and two people's brains and the different phases of our lives together. We're not just two people with two brains. We go through new phases of life every year that we get to keep learning in, right? So feelings during these processes are normal. Feelings are for processing. They're not for rushing through. So that was number two. Don't rush the feeling. Let it be there. Pay attention to it. Be on to your brain when it, when it wants to criticize yourself or your partner because of a feeling that you're experiencing today. When, when you notice yourself wanting to criticize yourself or your partner, that is a sure sign that you are resisting the emotions. As soon as you notice yourself wanting to criticize or blame, ask yourself, wait a second, what if nothing's gone wrong? And more importantly, what if this emotion is trying to give me some wisdom? I don't want to push that off on my partner. I don't want to criticize myself to the point where I can't even hear my soul speaking to me. What if something is going on in your relationship? What if your body is trying to tell you that? What if your soul is trying to tell you that? But you're so quick to criticize and get rid of the uncomfortable feeling that you don't pause and allow it to give you the wisdom to take the next best step. Here's a thing that we're not taught. There is wisdom inside of our feelings. Let me say that again. There is wisdom inside of our feelings. So notice how your brain wants to resist it and then slow down. Pay attention to it. Allow the feeling again. Sit with it. 
right? Just sit with it and say, okay, what's going on? And now, now that you are not jumping to conclusions and going down rabbit trails of what this means or doesn't mean about your relationship, and you're dropping criticism and you're allowing yourself to feel, the third thing to do is to be totally open. It's time to get really curious about whatever that feeling is, whether it's numbness or ap- apathy or any other feeling. You can apply this to anything. I'm, I'm talking about numbness in your relationship and, and feeling apathetic about your relationship today, but you can really apply it to anything. So let's take the feeling of numbness about your relationship specifically right now. You're allowing it to be there. You're not rushing through it or avoiding it. Now you can ask it, okay, why am I feeling numb? What could be going on? What am I missing? What do I want? If I weren't to feel numb, what would be changed, right? What would need to change for me not to feel apathetic? And what are all the variables in my life right now that could be contributing to this? Is there anything outside of our relationship that could be contributing to my body and my brain wanting to shut down on a certain area? Those are important questions to ask. Are you resisting any other emotions? If you're resisting frustration and and irritation, your, your body and your brain might just be saying, just shut down for a while. This is exhausting. You might need to actually go back and revisit the irritation that you felt last week and say, okay, Why is that there? What's going on for me there? What is irritation trying to teach me? Um, Is there anything that you can learn from this feeling? And then next, do you want to do anything about it? That's such an important question. What do I want to do about this feeling? What is it trying to teach me? So stay present with the feeling. Don't rush through it. Don't make assumptions about it. Slow down enough to have a conversation with yourself about it, right? What does your body have to say? What does your soul have to say? What is the wisdom that your highest self wants to share with you through this emotion? And if you want to do something about it, what is one small thing? Like really ask yourself this, like after you've sat with this emotion for a while, If you want to do something about the emotion, what is one small thing that your brain can easily get on board with this week? If you're feeling numb about your relationship, you're you're probably also feeling a loss of connection too. You know, it could be because of an argument or, or not feeling supported for a while. It might just be a time issue. You've been busy and you're you're disconnected. So ask yourself, what is one small way? I can be in charge of connection with my partner today. Trust yourself to feel the emotion. Trust yourself to learn from it. Get curious about it. Stop judging it. Stop judging your relationship because you're having a feeling and be open to learning from it. It's as simple as that. Um, Our emotions are here for us. So when you're feeling those, those 50% negative emotions, I want you to remind yourself, this is, how is this for me? How is this going to teach me? How can I pause and pay attention to it instead of rushing through it? It's not against you, not even your negative emotions. They are not against you. So hold them with compassion, allow them to speak to you. Again, this is an opportunity for you to get in touch with your body and your soul and ask them for wisdom. It's an opportunity for you to focus on you and to focus on your relationship again. But you have to be willing to feel it first. You have to to be willing to feel those scary emotions, whether it's numbness or apathy or anything else. It just means that you need to look deeper and be open to what your inner wisdom is telling you. This kind of emotional maturity is where high value thinking is. Being able to process your feelings and and pay attention to your feelings, no matter what they are, this is high value thinking that is going to propel you forward in life instead of keeping you stuck. Whether that's in, uh, you know, whatever your goals are in life or in your relationship, right? We want to continue to propel forward. In order to to do so, we have to slow down and feel 
what we're feeling. Don't rush through it. Don't jump to conclusions. Don't let your brain go on a dramatic rabbit trail. If you want your marriage to keep getting better, be willing to feel even the most disconcerting emotions, right? And learn from them. That's your challenge this week. Thanks for listening to Joyful Love. If you'd like to know more about my work, come visit me at rachelcunningham.com. That's Rachel spelled with an A-E-L, Cunningham.com.